everybody, Matt here, and I'm checking in. Hope you all are having a good weekend. Checking in, and this time I'm doing a contest entry, and this is for Cat Moon Child, who is celebrating 500 subscriptions, which, uh, first off, congratulations and well-deserved. Got a great channel there, Cat. I'm sure you're going to have a lot more subscribers down the road. And if you haven't already checked out her channel or haven't heard of her, then go over there and sign up and watch her videos. It's Cat, K-A-T, and then moon like the moon in the sky and child and uh, she's got a she's got a good uh, I don't know how long she's been on the VC I don't think she's been on maybe a year or so but uh, she's got a good channel she talks about a lot of music wide variety of music she talks about books also and other things and uh, so yeah she's got her uh, contest going for 500 sub subscribers and I've uh, been on the VC since about 2012 or so, and I've participated in a lot of contests. I've done several contests of my own and seen some great contests. This is uh, really excited about this one because this is one of the most unique and interesting contest uh, ideas that I've, I've run across. And I've run across some really good ones, like I said. But, but I think this is a really neat neat idea for a contest, and I hope you get a lot of... Uh, Hope you get a lot of entries, Cat. And so I'm looking forward. Not only am uh, you know there's a prize, and if I win the prize, that's going to be really neat and all that for sure. But uh, I'm just excited about the contest idea. Happy to participate, and I'm looking forward to seeing other people's um, um, submissions to the contest. So I think uh, you had another video of uh, books and records you got for your birthday here recently that you posted uh, yesterday, I believe and said you've gotten three entries so far but I hope there's a lot more to come it's it's a challenging question and contest but it's it's worthwhile it takes a little bit of work but it's fun and and I think it's just a really neat idea so just real quick if, if you're watching this and you're interested in entering the contest and I think you should be uh, it runs through you'll have to go over to her channel to get all the details but I think it runs through like August 15th to the middle of August and it's um, you can do a video submission if you if you do videos and I think if you don't if you just watch YouTube videos and don't that you can get onto the comment section and just uh, write your response to but hoping a lot of people make videos because uh, this uh, I know that um, Shannon has already made an entry and I watched that and did a really good uh, that was enjoyable and a great entry and Kat said that someone else had made an entry and picked them uh, and made an entry and I don't I don't know who that person is uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to looking that video up and watching it but so here's what it is you have to pick your favorite book or movie or I guess one of your favorite books or movies and you don't have to do both I guess you can do both if you want to but you have to do one or the other you have to pick a pick one of your favorite books or movies and then you have to kinda make a a soundtrack for that book or movie, pick out at least five songs for whichever you know decide to do the book or the movie, and sort of a soundtrack of uh, pick songs of what that book or movie evokes in your mind, what it uh, or you know songs that you think somehow relate to that book or movie in in whatever way. So obviously, books don't come with soundtracks. Generally speaking, most movies do. So if you pick a movie, uh, you, Kat said not to pick songs that are already in the movie. So I don't know, if you were to pick Valley Girl, for instance, the movie Valley Girl, you wouldn't use uh, I Melt With You by Modern English and A Million Miles Away by the Plimsolls because those songs are already in the movie. Uh, so you'd have to pick other songs that aren't in the movie, but songs that, that you think uh, somehow... Uh, Relate relate to the movie or or uh, catch the spirit of the movie. Um, so yeah, and it's uh, like I said, it's just because it's, it's a tricky thing because I I was going to do both. I was uh, wanting to do book and a movie, and I thought about movies, and I I just couldn't come up with anything. I uh, you know I love movies, so it's not any problem with thinking of movies, but just uh, to do a soundtrack. Because I kept running into things like um, um, Rushmore is one of my favorite movies, 
well, that's already got a great soundtrack, and I was thinking, you know, it's got some songs by the Rolling Stones and the Who and some other songs in it, and I was just thinking, I can't really, off the top of my head, think of anything that I could take those songs out and replace them with other songs that, you know, instead of the Rolling Stones or the Who, I'm going to put some songs in here by the Yardbirds or the Dave Clark Five or whatever, which, I mean, maybe that might work, but it just, I just couldn't make it work in my head. And uh, I thought Bonnie and Clyde, which is my favorite movie of all time, of course, that's got the old-timey kind of uh, old-timey sort of uh, music from, uh, was it uh, Earl Flats and Lester Scruggs, I think their name is, the, the uh, kind of old hillbilly music, which just fits the movie perfectly, so I couldn't really think of anything to replace that with. Um, you know, and my probably my second favorite movie is On the Waterfront, an old Marlon Brando movie, and that doesn't have songs per se in it, but it has music, uh, soundtrack music in the background, which fits the movie perfectly, so I couldn't really, you know, I wasn't going to say, like, well, I'll, I'll put, you know, uh, Get Off My Cloud, and She Loves You, and uh, Janie Jones by The Clash, and On the Waterfront, and that'll be my soundtrack, because I just didn't really add up or make much sense but uh it you know it's, it's a great great contest idea so i'm hoping more people do that um with movies because i'd be really interested to see what people come up with and if i if i can think of a movie that i can think of songs that i would put into i may still do another video not not to get a second contest entry or anything like that but just to do it just to do it just to do it for fun um so yeah but, um, so I was thinking about movies, couldn't come up with anything. I was thinking about some of my favorite books and initially couldn't really come up with anything and, and thought, well, this is a great contest idea. I really love, love the concept and everything of it, but maybe I'm just not going to be able to participate because uh, maybe I can't think of anything. But then it hit me, uh, one of my favorite books, um, I don't know, since it's not my favorite book of all time, maybe, but it's, it's up there, and it's one of my favorite books. And I thought, okay, that's perfect. I can I can come up with uh, five songs that I think uh, evoke the spirit of this book. And I actually, uh, once I started thinking of songs and figuring out songs, I just kept going. So I came up with a list of 20 songs for the soundtrack of this book, and then I just made myself stop because I didn't want to get it too ridiculously... Uh, you know, just too overreaching there, but, um, yeah, so the book, uh, and I thought of a bunch of things, you know, I thought of Macbeth, it's a play, it's not really a book, uh, Moby Dick, Catcher in the Rye, uh, World According to Garp, just a bunch of books that I love, and, um, just couldn't initially think of anything, a, song, a soundtrack that I could think of to go with any of those books, but then I thought of a book that's one of my favorite books, and it's uh, the title of the book is Twilight. Like, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are you, crazy, what are you talking, no, 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 and no, and hell no. Uh, quick, quick little thing about copyright law. You can uh, copyright a story, or a short story, or a screenplay, or a play, or a novel, or a TV show script, you can't copyright a title, so that's why you've got an album called Let It Be by the Beatles, and you've got an album called Let It Be by the Replacements. So, in other words, if you know, some, some new band was uh, bopping around, and they recorded a new album, and they decided to name the thing Exile on Main Street, or Dark Side of the Moon, or Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, they can do that. You know, they can't. Or a song, they can write a song, and name it get off of my cloud now they can't have the same lyrics they can't have the same music because they'd be sued 20 ways to Sunday and successfully so but you can use a title that's already out there so long and short of it is this Twilight is not the series of books and movies from uh, whatever several years ago about uh, goofy teenage kids and vampires that so enamored 10-year-old girls and middle-aged housewives a, a decade or so ago. This is a, other than sharing the title with that Twilight, this Twilight
twilight and that twilight have about as much in common as, uh, I don't know, a banana and a typewriter. It's completely different, completely different things. They just happen to share the title. So, here's a copy of the book, and it's by a guy named William Gay, as you can see. So, Twilight, the book, um, and just a, just a great, one of my favorite books. The, um, William Gay is a, was an interesting character. He, he wrote, I guess in his younger years, in his 20s, teens, 20s, 30s, I guess he started writing back then, but he, um, I think he had, he had some magazine, uh, I think maybe a story in the New Yorker, had something in the Oxford Literary Journal, I believe, had uh, something that I'd read. He wrote my fiction mainly, but he wrote some some uh, nonfiction. I wrote uh, read a piece that he did on uh, his appreciation of Bob Dylan uh, that was in a magazine somewhere. But he didn't actually publish his first book until about the late 90s, 99 or so, when he was, he was in like 50 or... Uh, 50, 51 or so when he published his first book, which um, was was this, also a great book. And then he uh, published this one a few years later, uh, Provinces of Night. And then in between all that was a collection of his short stories, the uh, I Hate to See That Evening Sun Go Down. And then Twilight, which came out in 2007, I believe about 10 years ago. So, um, <clears throat> I never heard of him until, and, and you know, he wasn't hugely known or anything. Never heard of him until this book came out and I saw a mention of it in a, rev a review or a mention of it in a magazine, I believe it was. Thought that sounds interested, so interesting, so I bought it and read it. Just a, just a great, incredible one, uh, great book. So, uh, that prompted me to go back and get his earlier stuff, which there's not a whole lot of it. Around about uh, a couple of years later, he was uh, had another book in the works that was supposed to come out called The Lost Country, and I promptly pre-ordered that on Amazon, and then when it came about time for the release date, I got an email that said it had been delayed, and then it was delayed and delayed and delayed, and he never finished it. And uh, a few years ago, uh, three or four years ago, he promptly dropped dead at the age of 70, unfortunately. And a couple of books that he was working on, I think, have since come out after uh, posthumously, but I have not read those yet, so uh, they're on my list to get. But anyway, um, he's, um, I, I love to read, and I read all sorts of things, fiction, nonfiction, just uh, just tons of stuff, history, and, um, you know, I enjoy, uh, th there's books that you buy, and the books that you read, and you really love them, and you keep them, and you go back and read them again every couple of years or so, there's books that you read, and they're enjoyable enough, and you read them, and you, you know, and forget about them, and, uh, so, I mean, I enjoy Stephen King, and things like that, and, uh, I don't know, crime, crime fiction, and thrillers, and, and all that, but uh, yeah, a lot of uh, older stuff, the classics and so forth, but I sometimes would wonder why aren't there still people around like writers like J.D. Salinger and Kurt Vonnegut and Faulkner and Herman Melville and Charles Dickens and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, this guy, I, I think, is in, in that class of writer, uh, the Bronte sisters and so forth. I think uh, this could, could and should be classic literature. It should be a lot better known than it is. Uh, he should be a lot better known than he is, but unfortunately is not. And I don't mean that this is this is real complex and ponderous and uh, deep stuff that you have to sit there and meditate on after you read it and boring and stuffy and and full of itself, you don't, you're don't. you not going to need a, a Cliff Notes to read this book and understand it. I don't, do they still even have Cliff Notes? I'm not really sure, but you're not going to need a, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's very readable, very enjoyable, very dark book, but um, it's also a book with uh, substance, a story with substance. Uh, all of his books are, 
there's text and there's subtext here so if you just want to enjoy the story you can do that if you want to uh, divine the deeper themes and meaning and literary attributes of the book you can do that he's a beautiful writer uh, just his prose and his sentence structure and his uh, construction of a story is is wonderful it's uh, one of those guys where if you love to read you're going to back up and reread sentences and paragraphs uh, sometimes a couple of times just because of the, the the flow of the words and the sentences and the choices of words and the structure of the sentence uh, and on top of just enjoying the story uh, so great great writer and great books all all three of these books and the short story books really good too there's another um, little novella that's uh, two stories in it that's kind of almost a pamphlet book and it's two stories that are about 60 pages which I have and I didn't pull out because I didn't want to go it's somewhere in, in my stuff and I didn't want to go dig it out anyway um, so think folklore think a very stark very dark hued story think gothic particularly southern gothic think uh, things like the lottery by Shirley Jackson a rose by a rose for Emily by William Faulkner uh, stories of Flannery O'Connor and and that sort of thing uh, a story ste I mean, a very relatable characters and and uh, realistic uh, or at least somewhat mainly realistic characters but a story and characters sort of steeped in folklore southern gothic uh, almost like a story or characters out of the old testament at times sort of a book um it um it um i don't want to give away a whole lot of the plot of the book and i'm not going to get into the plots of the earlier books those are both great and worth searching out as well but Twilight is a um, a scary story or a horror story but not not uh, you know not Saul or Chucky the Killer Doll or uh, Nightmare on Elm Street type horror it's um, sort of an urban legend folklore uh, but also a coming-of-age story also a story of small-town America in the mid mid uh, 20th century it's um, rich deep characters and and plot and action and description it's um, it's um, a, a boy and a girl brother and sister and uh, the girls like 17 or 18 the boys 14 or 15 around about that age the action of the book begins shortly after the the pair's father has has died. The mother's not in the story. She's either dead or gone. It's never really explained on that front. They live in a small town in Tennessee, not not a you know not a, a Nashville or a Memphis-sized town, but a small town. Uh, 1951, the, one of those towns where everyone sort of knows each other. Town full of a. Uh, families with all their secrets and foibles and good people and bad people and the random unpredictability of life comes into play so the brother and sister come to realize that the the uh, owner of the town's funeral home is uh, uh, not a good guy and up to up to um, not good things and I don't want to say too much more than that because I really don't want to give away plot I, I think this is if you love to read and if you love a good uh, mystery action urban legend type uh, southern gothic literature uh, just classic literature just gripping great story and character and plot if you if you're a fan of all that I think this is a book you would really enjoy and do well to search out and it's easily available it's on Amazon it's on wherever books are sold and so forth uh, so it's not hard to find um, so I don't want to give away too much but I, w I would encourage everyone that loves to read a good book especially a good spooky story 
to search this out and grab it and read it. It's uh, I think it's about 249, 250 pages, so it's a it's a fairly quick read. And um, yeah, so I mean, like I said, it's it's uh, there's humor in the book, but it's it's kind of a, a twisted and dark humor at times. There's uh, horrific episodes. There's uh, just uh, there's a whole lot of uh, themes running through the book and uh, just a great book definitely would say check it out so I came up with um, came up with a soundtrack for the book and I kinda sorta made it where the, the songs I pick follow the action of the book more or less or at least loosely some of the some of the songs I think uh, point towards specific things in the book some of them not so much, but they evoke the overall mood of the book in my mind. And uh, so, and I'm going to, I've got the list here, and I will uh, hold that up at the end of the video so that if you're interested, you can copy down the songs and you can go to YouTube and find all of these. And you can make like a folder of these songs for a soundtrack to this book. And you can go buy this book and read it and listen to these songs and see if you think it sort of fits the book or not. Um, so let's get on with the songs. Uh, some of the songs, and I'll show the records, or some of them are CDs, most uh, records that go along with the songs. Some of these I don't have the record or CD. I've got the songs on uh, my iTunes or iPod and elsewhere, but I don't have a physical uh, vinyl record or CD for them. But, um, so yeah, 20 songs. The first song that I picked, which is not really listed as a song on this album, and I don't know what the title of it is officially, but I call it, and I'm not going to take that out of there, I call this song Can You Take Me Back, it's by the Beatles on the White Album, it's that weird, creepy, unsettling little 30 second or so song that bridges into Revolution Number no. 9, uh, just a, kind of a throws you off and and, and disturbing little piece of music, probably the most unsettling or disturbing piece of music the Beatles ever produced. Uh, weird sort of song that's sort of, I imagine that's like what you hear right when you're born, or maybe it's what you hear right when you die. I don't know if they play songs when you're born or die, but I mean, just, just sort of that sort of a thing. Uh, sort of a mournful, but kind of hopeful or if not hopeful, hopeful of being able to be hopeful someday type song. And uh, I think that fits the overall mood of the book pretty well. The second song I picked is Wicked Annabella by The Kinks off of the my second favorite album of all time. Uh, the Kinks are the Village Green Preservation Society. Just kind of a spooky Halloween type song and uh, Dave Davies sings lead on that and it's, uh, it's a cool little song it's just kind of the closest that the Kinks really ever got to psychedelic music and there's a couple of things on Face to Face and something else but they were out of step with uh, what was going on in 67 and 68 and maybe that's why they're the best group that there is other than the Beatles because they sort of original and did their own thing but Wicked Al Annabella sort of a sort of a spooky Halloween type songs about a witch. Uh, this book's not about a witch. Well, eh, I'm not going to say anymore, but um, it, it fits the mood of the book. The uh, next song I picked is called Atlantic City, and that's on Bruce Springsteen's album Nebraska. Atlantic City is sort of a sort of a, I mean, Atlantic City's a, a, you know, I just think of a sort of a small town full of, uh, everyone knows everyone, full of secrets and good people and bad people, but sort of hard scrabble, some desperate people, good people in desperate situations, bad people that are just bad people, and and just sort of a, a stark and, and uh, sobering and hard life in a small town which this book sort of conveys the feeling of to me. The uh, next song is Mystery Train by Elvis Presley. 
which I don't have on an album. I've got it uh, elsewhere, but uh, one, of his, one of his son singles, just a haunting song of a lonesome train and, and a funeral train and catches the catches the mood of the book. And again, I could explain why it does, but I don't want to get into too much because I don't want to give plot points in the book away and ruin it in case anybody actually does pick up this book and read it. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, the next song, song number five, is another Bruce Springsteen. It's Darkness on the Edge of Town, the title track of the album Darkness on the Edge of Town from 1978, which I actually don't have. I used to have that, and that's weird because that's my favorite Bruce Springsteen album, but just sort of late night and you get out in the darkness outside of town and there's the mysterious woods or just the mysterious whatever's beyond the lights of the town and sort of mystery and possibility and sinister uh, possibly things sort of fits the mood of the book again as I've, I've said over and over. The uh, number six song is called in the Yard Behind the Church. It's by the Eels on their album Blinking Lights and Other Revelations, which is an album that never came out on vinyl, only on CD, except for this box set. Did uh, do a vinyl set, which uh, turned the CD into three vinyl albums. It's a limited edition of, I think, 2,500 pressing, a pressing of 2,500, and I got number... 1732 and it's autographed by the guy named E who's sort of the guy that the main guy of the band who writes the songs and sings um, so yeah there's a scene that takes place when you read the book you'll sort of understand but just uh, it being in the yard behind an old church at midnight or late at night it, next one is Ghost Town by the Specials one of the uh, ska bands from the late 70s, early 80s over in England. Um, that was the number one hit, I think, in England, that song, Ghost Town. And uh, just sort of a spooky Halloween sort of a song catches the mood. I don't I, I don't think I have that on the album, so I don't have it with me. The next song, Aunt, Aunt, no, Gra Aunt no Grave by Johnny Cash off the American Six album, which Johnny Cash, of course, when... Uh, Late in his life, the last 10 years or so of his life, he uh, hooked up with this guy named Rick Rubin, who was a producer who had produced, uh, I don't know, the Beastie Boys and some heavy metal bands or something. But he got with Johnny Cash and sort of gave him a, a, a comeback of sorts late in life. Uh, did a series of five or six albums. Several of them were released after uh, Johnny died. But... Uh, just really great albums and like I said this book is sort of you're reading it and it's almost like characters or the voice of the Old Testament and if anybody had a voice that sounds like they're singing straight out of the Old Testament into right now it's Johnny Cash so Ain't No Grave Gonna Hold Me or Ain't No Grave actually is what it's called and uh, there's a there's a, a some pivotal scenes in a graveyard in this book I'll say no more Number nine song is Maggot Brain, a cheery title by Funkadelic. That's the um, title track to their album, Maggot Brain, a great album, which I also don't have on vinyl or CD right now. I've got a lot of Funkadelic, and that's one of their classic albums that I need to get. But Maggot Brain is an incredible song, and uh, if you read the book, you'll see how that ties into the book. Song number ten is... Um, Atrocity Exhibition by Joy Division on Closer. Kind of a creepy, good, great song, but a creepy, uh, off-putting song that that uh, plays right into the book Twilight, I believe. Song number 11 is uh, uh, called Hall of the Mountain King which is on, um, yeah, the In the Hall of the Mountain King, which is a song that, uh, as well, it's on the Who Sell Out album. It's not on the regular Who Sell Out album. It's only on the deluxe edition CD uh, reissue of, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, bonus track material. 
great song. It's an instrumental. It's an old song. I, I don't remember who wrote it. The Who didn't write it, so other people have done it too, but The Who's version is really cool. Uh, just musically, it's kind of a... It's a cool, fun song, but it's, a, it's a, like a kind of a sinister, creepy, dark instrumental song. Uh, it does have some background vocals, but it's mainly instrumental. Uh, for the song number 12, we go back to the Eels album and a song called For Natalie, which is a kind of a remembering someone song. The girl in the book, the sister in the book, her name's not Natalie. It's, it's, she's called Corey, but I just sort of, the song Natalie sort of, uh, when I hear that, uh, feels like her purse or describes her character to me. So, Anyway, uh, 13, number 13 is The Oxford Girl by Shirley and Dolly Collins, which is an old, old song. I think it dates back. It's like an Irish or English song from back in um, probably like the 1600s or something. Shirley and Dolly Collins, I'm not really sure who they are. They're sort of, uh, uh, well, they're singers, obviously, but uh, these are these old sort of murder ballad songs from the way back days. And uh, Shirley and Dolly Collins did a version of this song. I think a ton of people have done it. But they did their version of this song probably, I don't know, in the 70s or the 80s or something. Uh, so sort of a, a dark folk music, if you like stuff like uh, like Steel Eye Span or uh, Fairport Convention, Pentangle, stuff like that. Uh, the, what's it, the McGregor Sisters? that sort of thing. It's sort of that type of music. A uh, very old um, uh, sounding song, but you know, more recent people doing it. Uh, where are we? Okay, we're on number 14. Number 14 is the band Magazine. Incredible band. Their first three albums are indispensable. Obviously you need to get them if you haven't already. Uh, but this song is called Permafrost off their album Secondhand Daylight, which is their second album from, I believe, 1979. Uh, just a great song, great guitar work, uh, some nasty lyrics in there, that uh, dark and disturbing lyrics that uh, play right into the uh, spirit of this book. And a couple of lines in particular that really almost fit the plot of this book in a, in a creepy and disturbing way. Song number 15 is Three-Legged Dog, Three-Legged Dog by The Handsome Family. That's off their album, Milk and Scissors. Handsome Family is, I believe, their husband and wife team that sing these old, uh, dark rock and folk songs. Three-Legged Dog being, a like, sort of a misfit or someone that uh, didn't have a chance in the world but is just plugging along and trying to do the best they can with what they got, and that sort of reminds me of uh, the brother and the sister in this story, and uh, a couple of the other characters as well. Number 16, Johnny Cash is back with uh, from American Four, and the song is called The Man Comes Around, which is a, a, a violent, dark, disturbing song, but a great song nonetheless. Uh, fits right in again with the book. Number 17 is the title track of this album, the song Nebraska, which is just a stark sort of modern day, well, this album came out, I think, in, what, 80, 81 or so, 82, I don't have a modernish day murder ballad song. And Johnny Cash is back again for number 18, a song called God's Gonna Cut You Down which sort of plays into the theme of this book. The, um, almost done here. Song number 19 is a song called Section 43 by Country Joe and the Fish. Came out in 1966. And I've got, this is a, uh, this is a Love is a Song We Sing, San Francisco Nuggets 65 to 70. Really neat thing. I don't know if this is still in print or not, but it's a four CD set, and I don't know if you can see there, but the CDs come out there and there. And uh, so it's a San Francisco scene from 65 to 70. Got a, a book with a lot of great pictures and a lot of information, and all the uh, San Francisco uh, 
Summer of Love and hippie bands, and and then some you never heard of. I mean, you got you've got Jefferson Airplane, Grateful Dead, Sly and the Family Stones, Janis Joplin, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Quicksilver Messenger Service, but there's a lot of bands that um, I never heard of, but some great music on this. So if you can find this thing, if it's still available, definitely worth checking out. And there's uh, I don't know, there's like 70, 75 songs on this, this set. Uh, but yeah, Section 43 by um, Country Joe and the Fish, which of course they're the best known for the What Are We Fighting For? Next Stop is Vietnam song, or Vietnam. And uh, this is just a very, uh, came out in 66 on an EP, and then they re-recorded it for their debut album, which I think came out in 1967. Um both versions are great. I like the earlier version a little better. Just sort of a chill out ambient music, long before ambient music was a was a thing, like several decades before, which is not usually a type of music that I like, but this works. It's just sort of a in one way it's just sort of a relaxing, kick back, chill out song, but in another way it's uh, sort of a sort of like you get up in your early morning and it's cold and there's mist and fog and you're out just sort of wandering around and doesn't seem like there's anyone else but you in the world type feeling. It's uh, also sort of a feeling of confusion or just woke up or you've just gone through something uh, strenuous and or horrific and you're just wandering around in a daze af in the aftermath of that not exactly knowing just sort of can't even begin to think of what your next step is just yet at that point. The last song, number 20, I picked to uh, sort of end on a, on a up, up note somewhat, because it's a song of hope, sort of, or it's a song of, maybe it's more, it's a bittersweet, sort of sad song, beautiful song, but it's also a song of more hoping that someday you'll get to the point where you can hope for hope uh, but but starting to move that way and it's a song called Song for Ten and it's by well there's two two people did it one is by Neil Hannon and the other is by Tim Phillips uh, both versions are the same song it's just uh, different singers actually and the music is a little different between the two and one one version is about a minute longer than the other and what what happened there is this was um, and I don't have the CD or anything for the album for this and I, I don't really know who Neil Hannon or Tim Phillips are so I don't know if they've done other records or albums outside of this this was a song on the I think it was a 2005 Christmas episode of Doctor Who called The Christmas Invasion it was a song at the end of the episode like I said, very uh, kind of sad, bittersweet, but very beautiful uh, musically and vocally. Uh, bits it sounds like a David Bowie song, even though it's obviously not him singing. But uh, so it's just sort of a, the book does sort of end on kind of a little bit of brightness or hope, slight, but but it's there. So, Song for Ten, uh, and that, that is, uh, oh, the, the one version was used in the actual TV show, the episode of Doctor Who, and then when the soundtrack for the, I think it's the 2005-2006 seasons of Doctor Who came out, uh, I don't know, for licensing or whatever the purpose was, they used the other guy is on the CD. But, uh, so both, but both of these are available on YouTube. And they're both worth listening to. Some people prefer one over the other. I like both versions. Uh, so that's my uh, long-winded uh, picks. And here is... Hold that up in case anyone's interested and wants to copy that down. I think, like I said, buy the book and read it. And uh, go find these songs or you know, buy the records or go just go on YouTube and put the videos in a folder and uh, listen to them while you're reading the book or after you're reading the book. I mean, that's a little over an hour's worth of music, so I don't think you can be able to read the book in an hour and a half. But, but yeah, so I hope a lot of people make an entry 
and I hope you get more subscriptions and uh, check out Cat Moon Child's channel if you haven't. Uh, it's a long ass video, but uh, congratulations, Cat, and had fun doing this, and I'm looking forward to everyone else's uh, entries.